Okay, now we've got points in there ready to go. Ten nine. Look, they're bed. Someone's going to sleep. Oh, I won't play with it. This towel breach. Well, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, we're there in the corner. And we're coming this way, yeah. Come <clears throat> on. So who's coming to the van with me to start? Um, the main problem is that thing in the back is you can't get to it when you're driving. Access, it's an access so, issue. We'll just get one drink out because there's no lever in there at all, is it? Pav is coming of his own back because he just wants to be around it. You've got to love this guy. We'll keep him around it. Oh, yeah. He's lovely. So, Pav, put Si on the back of Pav's bike. <laughs> yeah, not eating the wrong way. There's a lot of stuff in there, isn't there? Yeah. There are beers in there. They're beers for when we get here. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> Testes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just wish you hadn't said that. I've been here three minutes and I've been here for about a minute. Can we just say no helmet? Me and Pavi smoke together for any testes. Bananas and... Yeah, that's alright. There's plenty of stuff. The thing is, there's loads of stuff standing up. Which isn't going to stay like it, is it? Come, big measure, come here. Yeah. Come here. Let's do that. Come here. Come here. Yeah, do what you want. Get it, get it, get it. Yeah, there it is. When I first met T, he um, came to this country to play basketball for the club that I was playing for. Um, and I, uh, I, I shared an office with the coach. So I sort of was uh, had some inside info on what was going on on, on, on with, with the team, and I knew that this this seven foot Zimbabwean guy was coming to this country to play basketball. He was playing for, I believe, it was the Zimbabwean national team, and he uh, somehow he got his some footage. He got in the hands of some guy, a guy called Mark Lloyd in Colchester, and uh, Mark wrote him and said, look. We want you to come over to England to play. To any young man in Africa to be given a chance to come to America or Britain uh, to do something specific is, is just like a gift from heaven and they're, and they're just going to take it. I'm not 100% sure how Mark got hold of the video, do you know what I mean? Whether it was like circulating in the basketball circles, I don't know. But anyway, Mark got hold of it um, and invited Ten Nine to go over and, and play and live over in England, you know? And so he, he literally sold everything he had to get here. Um, and unfortunately, it it didn't work out. It, the the basketball club hadn't researched how easy it would be to get him the correct visas to be able to play and live in this country. So that didn't work out. And and then of course he was stuck here. So so that's when Nick said, and my mum and dad said, well, why don't you come and stay here for a couple of nights? And he ended up staying for about five or six years. You know. <laughs> Nick and Tendai arrived home. They'd been Nick had gone to pick Tendai up from the airport, and they'd been he'd been gone absolutely ages, hadn't they? They were stuck at the airport, waiting for sixteen hours while he was being interviewed by immigration. And uh, when he came through, obviously uh, it was pretty obvious which one he was because he was a foot taller than the next tallest person. Um, but he was he was not the man that we see these days. He was he was terribly thin. And I'm talking about 12 stone, and when you're 7 foot, 12 stone is very, 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 very thin. He, uh, he, was, he was lost. He was a little lost puppy in this country. Um, the first time I took him on the M25, he, uh, he, he was absolutely petrified. He, he didn't, you know, he'd never seen a road that busy before. Nick arrived home when the door opened, and Nick walked in and said, I brought Tendai here, and he just stayed outside. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't, come, wouldn't in. come in, and um, we had to say to him, come in, and we introduced ourselves as Peter and Terry, and he found it so hard to call us Peter Absolutely. and Terry. Absolutely, that was so alien to him, to even yeah. set foot in our house until we actually invited him in, and then when he came in, he just stood there, he just sort of froze, really, because he, he, he didn't know what to do, did he? No, no. That was very hard to put him at ease in those early days. I didn't know what to expect when I knew Tendai was coming because I didn't know what somebody from Zimbabwe would look like, and I could, honestly can I, I didn't know what to expect. And I was sitting at the, the the kitchen table, and he walked in through the door, and I thought oh, that wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> you can't include all that probably, but I did. He was just, he was just he was instantly amazing. Tendai was when we first met him. I was living here actually. I just moved back here. Um, 
after a number of years living down in Felixstowe and Nick was living here at the time as well I think and he said oh you're going to love Tendai this guy Tendai and he described them all to me and you know a little bit of his story and things like this he said oh you two are just going to get on like a house on fire and um, yeah I mean, I, I, it just my, blow, blew me away I mean, probably A the tallest guy I've ever met in my entire life and he was just lovely he was just such a lovely humble um, you know, very straightforward guy. He was just very tall and he couldn't speak very good English so it was difficult to communicate but he seemed like a really nice genuine guy. I only met him four years ago so effectively speaking I've only known him as like a British citizen you know I didn't know him when he came to England and when he had to be guided by Nick you know for day-to-day -day life but Obviously, Nick spoke about Tendai a lot when I first got with Nick, and he told me how spiritual he was and what an inspirational guy he was. Um, so he's kind of already sort of painted a really good picture of who he was and what he was like as a person. And um, and yeah, he sort of lived up to everything that Nick and the whole Drain family sort of made him out to be, really. Well, I actually used to play basketball against Tim. Um, <laughs> It could have been maybe four four years ago. I started to play against him. Um, he was playing for Holbrook, and I was playing for uh, Cobbleston basketball team. And uh, yeah, we uh, yeah we used to play against each other. He used to mark me. I used to mark him. But he uh, he always out rebounded me big time. He's, he's got silly long arms, so he just <laughs> out rebounded me every time. Um, I think I think I got a couple of blocks in there every now and again, um, which uh, which was good. Um, yeah, so I guess I guess that's the f uh, that's how I sort of first met him originally, um, and then sort of as I got to know Nick and working with Nick Drain a lot more, um, he sort of introduced me to T, um, and then uh, the idea of T started to run three marathons. Uh, we got talking and we decided that I would uh, help prepare him for that run. So, so yeah, that's uh, that's how I met him. Um, it's just staying, staying mentally strong when you're running. Um, like 
after playing against T on a basketball court and just sort of getting to know him, I knew, you know, he, he had the, the, uh, the uh, uh, determination to do whatever he wanted. So that wasn't really an aspect that I was worried about. Um, so he always had that sort of part of him that he could, you know, put to the run, which is, uh, I think, you know, one of the most important bits for a marathon runner, you know, and a three marathon runner, definitely. Other parts were, you know, he's going to be taking thousands of steps, thousands of strides. Um, so his ankles, and knees, and hips need to be um, strong and resilient to any sort of, you know, potential um, you know, twisting ankles or, or knees going to funny directions or loads of things like that building up. Um, so yeah, I spent a lot of time on um, ankle, knee, and hip um, flexibility and mobility around the areas, um, and just kind of getting them very resilient. To, uh, to thousands of steps and thousands of strides.